Why Clef Jean, BKS1 Radio, let's go. This is Essence Atkins and this is BKS1 Radio. Hi, this is Melba Moore and you're listening to BKS1 Radio. Yo, check it out, what's the deal? This the chef, giving a big shout out to my peoples. BKS, you already know what it is. Salute. What's up, it's your girl Monifa and I'm hanging with BKS1 Radio. Hi, I'm Ian LaVanzan and you're listening to BKS1 Radio. BKS Radio, baby. <laughs> Hey, this is Jasmine Guy for BKS1 Radio. What's going on? This is Lamont Rooker, and this is BKS1 Radio. Shout out to BKS1, the best kept damn secret in the business. Hey, what's up? This is Raven Goodwin from BT's Being Mary Jane, and shout out to BKS1. Hi, this is Leon, you're watching BKS1 Radio. BKS1. God bless y'all. Why Clef Jean, BKS1 Radio, let's go. All right, here we go. Hello. Yeah, y'all can hear me now. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Owl Show right here on BKS1 Radio. It is your girl, Latoya Chanel, and I'm here. I'm in the building. I'm in the studio. God bless me to be able to make it back. So we're here today, and we want to keep going in our conversation about the healing journey and, you know, the portion of the healing journey that we're in. We're going to continue on with that. But... How are you all? First and foremost, talk to me in the chat. If you're listening to me on TuneIn, what's up, everybody? For those in my Spotify audience, hello and welcome to the show. Everybody who is watching on YouTube, hey, what's up, everybody? What's up? But if you are on Facebook and you're watching on the From the Owl Show page or maybe my personal page on Facebook, make sure you come on over here and you talk to me in the chat because... um. We're answering questions today. You know why we're answering questions? Because just like I told everyone last week, this week we do have Coach Trev, who is going to be in the virtual building with us asking questions. And a lot of you, as I had mentioned, put your questions either in my DM. I got so many questions in my DM. I have so many questions that were text to me. I got so many questions from people um, that just had just wanted to know, you know, some things. And we are going to go through all of them today. And he's in the building. So we're going to continue on. But if you have any additional questions and we have the time to get to them, go ahead and put them on in the chat. Hey, Sean, go ahead and put them on in the chat. And we'll hopefully if we have time to address them, we will. If not, we're going to try to talk to Trev and get him back. I know he's been here before, but, you know, we, we love when Trev's here. So we're going to try to get him, you know, back in studio. With Maybe we could get him in studio. I don't know. We'll have to talk to him in advance about that. You know what I mean? But in the meantime... In the meantime, we are on the healing journey and we are happy to be on the healing journey. The sun is shining. We are having some good days and we know it's not always easy and we know that there's going to be some bumps in the road. But hopefully, hopefully you are finding some sort of solace in your healing journeys. Hopefully you are reaching new heights, getting to new levels and just doing some things that you want to do right now. And hopefully it feels good. It's positive and you're having some healthy outcomes i am 
by the grace of God. And I hope you all are too. And hopefully you're learning along the way because the whole goal is for none of what you're going through to be in vain because, because hopefully you'll be able to share with other people, right? We learn sometimes from other people's stories. Sometimes we don't have to stumble. Sometimes we don't have to, you know, fall and 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 hurt ourselves because sometimes other people's stories um can help us. So, you know, that is definitely the goal. But in the meantime, I want you all to help me uh welcome to the virtual studio tonight our guest who is back, Coach Trev. Can you come on in for us, please? Can, you, can we add coach add coach on in here? Uh, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Okay, we are here. <laughs> hey, Trev. <laughs> How are you? Can you hear me? I'm good. I'm good. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Can you hear me? You were, you were taking your bow. I was taking my bow. Listen. Well, you know what? You deserve that. Do it. There you go. Here we go. Clap it up. We love Appreciate it. We, we love it. We love it. Did you hear all of that? Because all of that was for you. So Heard. welcome back to the show. I know you Thank were you. here a couple of weeks ago and we started mm -hmm. talking about love in the healing journey, because even though we are on a personal um, journey of, of trying to better ourselves, I mean, we're still on, you know, us as a people, but just our personal journey, uh, we love is a part of it. And for a lot of us, love is, is, is priority next to ourselves and, and the relationship and the partner that you choose. And we began talking about that a couple of weeks ago. And I continued the conversation last week based off of something that you and I had discussed the week prior. And last week's question was, um, uh, should you be healed already before getting into a relationship or does healing occur through the relationship or while you're in the relationship? And we had some great responses to that. And we got a chance to really talk through that and get some perspective on that and and some understanding um, on that. And actually, I believe my perspective may have changed on that particular topic. Or maybe I just got some understanding around it. Anyway, um, so now you're back this week. And I told everyone last week to either send me questions that they had. Or I did promise people that they would be able to come on live. But we'll see how that goes later on the show. I don't want my producer in here to kill me, which he will. But the point is, is that uh, I did get some questions ahead of time from a number of folks that will remain anonymous but uh and i sent them to you ahead of time so you want to go ahead and get started we can we can okay all right so first of all i want to i want to start with this particular question because this pertains to you and what it is that you do right mm -hmm. so question number one that came from someone was what qualifies you to be a relationship coach um because i said i'm one no, I'm <laughs> no actually that 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 that's that is true <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I saw that question and I actually saw who asked that question and that person kind of already knows me. So right. they probably didn't know it was, it was me, but, um, I'm not going to list along, uh, all the accolades and things of that nature, but, um, I've been coaching, uh, for two decades at least, mm -hmm. uh, for about 12 years, I've been coaching on dating and relationships. Um, I've interviewed maybe 350 married and divorced couples at this point. Um, so I've got a lot of perspective from that. Um, I wrote a book, um, a personal journey. Uh, that book has helped me that along with a course that I've put together in the past in my coaching, mm -hmm. probably got about 50 plus testimonials of people being single and then getting married and then, you know, giving me some of the credit, obviously they had to put the work in. Absolutely. Um, I can't even tell you how many aha moments I've gotten text or, or um, messenger. Um, like I said, I wrote a book, uh, but most importantly, I think the advice that I've learned, the things that I've learned and I now teach, I applied it to myself and I've been married, been my, been my, well, my wife for about 12 years, been married about 11. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, other than that, 
<laughs> like, other than that, nothing. Clear. Nothing, nothing, nothing really. No qualifications. <laughs> you know, just talking. Right, right. Okay. So that's the first one. The second part of that question was, instead of seeking a relationship coach or before seeking a relationship coach, wouldn't it be more beneficial for someone to seek therapy to uncover why they make the choices that they make? Right. Um, I like that question a lot. Mm -hmm. And the reason, well, one of the reasons I would say I like that question a lot is because, and you know this too, I'm actually creating rebuilding my course, uh, my coaching program that I had years ago mm -hmm. that was pretty successful. Um, but part of that coaching course, and I understood this, is I had one of my favorite um, therapists join that course. So along with coaching, I realized that a lot of times there's something in our past mm -hmm. that's uh, preventing us from seeing some of the things that I may be sharing with that person. So right. uh, I believe they're two separate things, coaching and therapy. Mm -hmm. uh, I do Absolutely. believe everyone Absolutely. deserves to treat themselves to therapy. Um, as far as the order of it, you know, I, it really depends on the person. And you're going to hear me say that a lot um, for a lot of different answers. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm not a big cookie cutter type of person because I realize your life experience is different than mine. Um, but to answer that question directly, I don't know if there's a necessarily an order, uh, but I do believe that people need to seek therapy. Um, and it depends on the person, obviously, but, yeah. you know, it can ne therapy can never hurt. As a matter of fact, if someone is going through therapy, it makes my job easier to help them focus on the present and the future when they've already kind of diverged and, and figured out what was challenging them in the past. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's that's my answer to that question. I do believe in therapy wholeheartedly. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah. I, I listen to uh, at my job. We have these diversity, inclusion and standing in solidarity training, uh, diversity, including trainings, standing in solidarity series. One of the series we had done was um, black women in business. And uh, one of the young ladies mentioned, she said at a certain point <clears throat> in your life as a businesswoman, you should have three things. She said the first one is a therapist to help you cipher through the past. The mm -hmm. second one is a coach and a mentor. Mm -hmm. So she kind of used those two interchangeably, uh, a, a coach and a mentor. And she said, and then the third one is you should have a publicist. She said to document what it is that you're doing in business. And I took that to heart. I literally took that to heart. I literally, I hired a publicist. I started scheduling a bunch of meeting meetings with my mentor and, um, and I already have a therapist. So, uh, you know, but, uh, I definitely believe that we never stop learning. We never stop growing. And you definitely need someone that's out of your sphere of knowledge that can help you to get to where it is you want to go. I agree. So, yeah. So I, I Okay. So we agreed with that one. All right. Good, good question. Good question. You ready for the next one? Really quickly. My actually, you know, when I, I would say before I started coaching my first client, that was unofficial. It was like when I first kind of got into the, I was already training and coaching people regarding business and mm -hmm. sales and things of that nature, but I had a little hiccup in my uh, relationship in the past. My mentor who I was speaking to, like you said, my mentor recommended me to a therapist and that therapist is what got me started on this whole journey. So again, just to circle back, I do believe in talking to someone because, you know, me talking to that woman 13 years ago yeah. led me to a marriage that's lasted 11 years right now with two kids and all that stuff. And I mean, the amount of people I've helped at this point, I can almost attribute it to that. Yeah. Those conversations with that therapist. Absolutely. Absolutely. You never know. You never, you just, you never know. But get the help and then see where things go from there. Mm -hmm. Right. And getting help doesn't always necessarily mean that something is tragically wrong with you. And I think that's the stigma that we have in our community that, oh, well, you, you got to go speak to a therapist because clearly you're crazy. But that's not that's not what that means. Sometimes mm -hmm. talking to a therapist keeps you from going crazy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so absolutely, uh, yeah, I, I definitely agree with you that. And I believe it's necessary. It, here's another thing, too. Uh, a lot of times people don't even realize how much they need therapy until they go. I, Some people don't realize how much they need a mentor or a coach until they have one for a few sessions. And they're like, 
wow, you know, this this is that guide I needed. You know, sometimes people are, I think people have this misconception that they're miles away from their goal. And many times they're literally right around the corner, but you need somebody to let you peek around the corner or push you yes. to see around that corner in order to see where you're going. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes you're not as far as you think you are. And sometimes you are a lot further than you <laughs> believe yourself to be. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that's that's uh, unfortunately, I think that's a lot of us. But in the meantime. OK, so next question. How do you balance time between your significant other and your children? Hmm. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I, when I saw that question, again, it depends on the person. It depends on the relationship. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's a very vague question. Mm -hmm. um, but I'll, I'll say this. Um, it depends on your purpose and your focus. I think if you're lucky enough to have these type of conversations before you get into a relationship, it's really good to map out in your mind what your focus is going to be, what, what your intention is going to be. Because focusing on anything outside of that will cause you to kind of maybe um, veer off from your 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 goal. Yeah. Um, there's about 10,080 minutes in a week, 10,000 or so minutes in a week. Um, if you take three hours to spend with your significant other, let's just say three hours out of a whole week, mm -hmm. that only that represents less than 2% of your week. Mm -hmm. If you double it, let's say you spent six hours with them, that represents less than 4% of your week. Mm. So again, if you're intention is to create a great relationship and obviously you have these children they're a part of your relationship you, you almost can't separate them because yeah you know i have two small children everything is is mixed together yeah um yeah. but i want you to really think about this if if you can't find if you can't allocate four percent of your week to this person that you say you love you got to reevaluate all of your priorities yeah. Now, I know some people have challenges with like, you know, um, kids that have, you know, let's say any challenges, I don't know, um, mental challenges, whatever it is, physical challenges. So that's a little bit more, um, you know, requires a little bit more of your attention. But even so, you got to think about what is the purpose of this relationship? Yeah. You know, a lot of times I think people don't fully understand the implications or a lot of people don't understand the things that they're doing right now and the implications that it'll have on them and their family historically, like, you know, if, if you don't give that attention to that significant other and you divorce, yeah, that may not seem like a big deal to you. And maybe your kids are affected and, you know, you don't have the luxury of sitting back 50 years from now or a hundred years from now, looking at your family tree and kind of seeing who did what and how it affected the family. Cause if we did, we all did that, we can go back and find, different family members that may have made bad decisions that affected you or maybe affected your children, which may be their great, great grandchildren. Yeah. So not, not focusing on that relationship or, or finding that time or making that time. Again, you may not understand how historically in your family that may ruin your legacy. You know, you, this is, you, you, it's almost like sports. I, I you know, I'm a guy, so I relate to sports, right? You have a <laughs> career, your life is a career and your family tree is the NBA or the NFL, and you have a certain amount of time here. You have a finite amount of time here. You don't understand historically what you mean to your family, but your grandkids will understand what you meant to the family. Now, you, in my opinion, you know, that's one of the driving forces for me. So you ask, like, what, how do we, how do my wife and I figure that out? Well, one of the main things I understand is that this is 200 years from now or 100 years from now. Unlike us, you know, today, we can go back and look at our grandparents and learn a little bit about them, but it's not a lot of, a lot of things documented, but your great, great grandkids are going to have a lot of information on you and what you did and the legacy you left, not necessarily money, but, you know, habits or decisions, you know, people that got locked up or, you know, people that, like I said, divorced. And so I would say, and again, this is the conversation. This is why I do like that idea of coach and mentor kind of being in the same conversation. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I try to do to a person like that, again, that question is very vague, but I get them to find a vision. Like, what's a vision that you can stand behind? And I know that when I leave this earth, I want to be able 
for my great great grandkids to to point to me and have a, a slew of the great things to say about me but i want them to look at the relationship i had with their great grandmother or great great grandmother and say wow he's the example because when i look back in my family i look at my father who was a single he, he, he my grand my father came from a single parent household my grandmother came from a single parent household mm -hmm. whether it be death or just didn't work out uh, my mother wasn't in my life, so I came from a single family, the parent household. Yeah. So you have to understand, going into my relationship and currently now, there's a driving force to make sure it works. And if that is your focus, you don't get a chance to look at the obstacles that will come in your way. So for that person, I would say, really think about where you want to land historically in your family and use that as a driving force to for all of your decisions. You can't neglect your children, obviously, yeah. but maybe you need to. My children know. Mommy and daddy, my children, I have an eight and a six year old. They'll laugh sometimes. Like, yeah, mommy and daddy need mommy and daddy time. That doesn't mean anything physically. It just means, mm -hmm. yeah, we need to let leave, let them watch TV by themselves for a minute. This is an eight and a six year old. Yeah. So you have to, in, you know, ingrain your children, ingratiate your children to understand that. Like, you know, mommy and daddy need their time. You know, we're, we're, we're you know, you're going to go to Pop Pop's house <laughs> or, you know, hey, you can sit and watch TV or you can do your homework, but mommy and daddy need their time. Because historically, I understand that I'm going to be looked at and judged, and I want them to look at me as an example and not a warning. Yeah. Okay. So it's the 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 love legacy that you're leaving behind. So when you look into your history and you and you see grandma and grandpa and great great grandma and great great grandpa instead of just one or the other, it's a legacy of love. It's the history. It's it's the the thread that kind of makes us who we are. And it so is. you you want to leave that. You want to leave that kind of legacy. Even more so um, in the current, because, you know, a lot of people aren't too worried about uh, legacy, even though people throw that word out like it's, you know, they, they, do. they throw it out. But, you know, a lot of people don't really mean it. <laughs> um, but even in the current, I remember having a conversation with my children who are now both of them are grown. And um, I I remember having a conversation. My, my son has been with his girlfriend for a number of years now. And just in having talks about relationships and different things, I said to him one day, I, I'm sorry. I wish that I could have given you a personal example of what marriage looks like. You know, so we're not even talking about legacy and hundreds of years in the future, just in my household now, because I came from a double parent household. I, my parents were married to the day that my father died. And so there are certain jewels that I received that my children did not. There are certain experiences that I had that my children did not. And then there's certain experiences that my children have being raised by just me that I don't understand because mm -hmm. I had both of my parents, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. so I wish that I was able to, um, you know, give them more of what I had. And I, I could not, you know, I could not, the marriage did not work. We were not together. And so, you know, legacy is one thing, but sometimes it's right in your face the decisions and the choices that you make sometimes it's right in your face and you and you have to deal with the consequences of that so 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 when i say legacy you gotta understand you're a young woman so right. in right. in my mind your 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 career is not over right. I, and, and so when i say legacy i know what you're talking about right now but let's just say if this is your career that divorce was an injury it didn't end your career. Maybe you have to sit on the sidelines for a few years to kind of rehab. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and but it's again, it's much bigger than just relationships and marriage and love. It's just you as a person. But if you're relating it to relationships, you just had an injury. You you twisted your ankle or you tore your ACL. <laughs> you had to sit out a couple of seasons. But again, you know, it, it's more about what you do moving forward because your story isn't done, isn't finished until it's finished. Yeah. So if yeah. you got another 40 years of living to do, how many more championships can you win? How many more wins are you going to talk? How many more lessons are your kids going to learn from you? Furthermore, you know, your children are probably, you know, just like me. That was a motivating factor. 
you know, yeah. I, I know my father and my mother weren't together, but that was no knock on my father. My father has taught me so many things and my father eventually got remarried. Yeah. You know, so yeah. again, I want you to look at that. It was a, it was a slight setback. It was a slight setback, but we, so we, have, we going back to the championship. So I just had, so, <laughs> so I just, I just, I, got, I just got injured. That's all. That's, that's you got injured. That's, you know, it, listen, anything can happen. You know, you, anything can happen. It was, it was a minor setback. <laughs> minor. Okay. All right. So we're going to move on. I think we we may be able to Jeff, let me know. We may be able to bring on someone to ask a question in a few minutes. Jeff, are we okay to do that? On Zoom? I can add them? Huh? Okay. All right. So what we're going to do, uh <laughs> The young lady who, uh, this was actually one of her questions. I'm going to add her now and we're going to allow her and you to elaborate on this live. You ready, Trev? I'm ready. Okay, here we go. Let's see. I'm going to add her in. Let's see if we can find her. Here she is. Here she is. We're connecting to audio. Is she here? Hello. Latricia. Hey, Jaya. How you doing? Hi, you are on live right now. Welcome to the show. Hi, right, thanks for having me. Of Hello. course, of course. And Coach Trev is here. We were actually just talking about your question, but I want you to go ahead and either reiterate your question or go ahead and ask it how you want to ask it. Okay. Hi, Trevor. How are you doing? I'm better than good. How are you? I'm okay. Um, I was asking about how do you make time for your spouse or your significant other and still have time for the children. Like that's a very hard thing for me to do. I have four kids and a husband and it's like, I never have enough time to do uh, both. I I think that's an excellent question. Um, I should have brought my wife in here to answer that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, first of all, let me just say this as, as a father, an active father, I have to acknowledge that mothers just get the bulk of the energy taken away and the workload thrown on them. No matter what, I can stand in front of my kids and they'll walk past me and talk to mommy, even though I'm capable and I, I tell them, talk to me, they'll go to her. So let me first acknowledge that you're not alone in that. My wife says it all the time. Um, but like I was telling, I was saying earlier, um, it's it's really about your philosophy, and if and I know it's sometimes it's hard to you know it's hard to find time in a day. But I'll I'll tell you this: when you had for me, this is me at least. When I had one child, you know, when I had no children, I said, "Man, I don't have any time." And then we had a child, and I, I figured I had a little bit of time, and I was like, "Man, if we had two children, I wouldn't have any time at all." And then we got two children, and we still find time. So there's time there. Just some things are going to have to be rearranged but forget all of the details i'm more about the philosophy like how you approach it there's a and i was saying there's about ten thousand minutes in a week ten thousand right. right minutes in a week if you and your husband spent three hours together that would represent less than two percent of your week okay if you, if you spent six hours together that would represent less than four percent of your week so this okay. is not a knock on you we, my wife and i have to say this to ourselves like i have to be able to at least give four percent of my week to this woman that i love or in your case to this man that i love I, I, however that happens whether you guys got to watch power together whether you guys are eating dinner together whether you know if your kids are old enough maybe you have to park them somewhere and you go to the movies but the, what i was um saying earlier is Think about it um, from a historical standpoint. You don't want 10 years to go by and you and your husband are not connected because you couldn't find, couldn't get 3% of your week. Right. So, so in essence, I'm, I'm almost not you. So don't take this personal. I'm kind of, <laughs> I want to, I beat myself up a little bit to find that time. Well, my wife kind of is organized to where I have a six and an eight year old. They'll joke around sometimes without us saying it like, yeah, oh, let's let's leave mommy and daddy alone they need their own time like we we we, we don't tell them that they're bothering us anything like that but they understand hey listen mommy and daddy need time together so um i'll sh again i'll find i'll find you on social media and i'll share this with you again in a different fashion but again i want okay. you to really think to yourself four percent of your week 
And when you really break it down that way, you say, man, like I, I, I you know, I mean, of course you got to take some time to sleep. So that's part of that percentage, but right. 4%, you know, this is somebody that you have four, I mean, you have children with, so you kind of, you have to do it right. because I, I mean, I don't know about you, but I have people in my family that have been divorced or, you know, raised in a single parent household. And, you know, you're, it, it, it seems like you're doing a great job. I mean, it, it's just the fact that you're even asking this question. So right. it, it's a lot of pressure on you. Don't get me wrong, but listen, yes. we're not going to be a, we're not, it's a lot of pressure. We are not going to be alive that long. Right. Even if we live for 50 years, listen, when you're at the end of that 50 years, it's go you're going like, man, it blew by. So right. you only have the time that you have, but you, it, it, this, your kids are going to leave the house too at some yes. point. And then yes. you want, you want to, you want to make sure that when they leave, nothing changes between your husband. I mean, don't get me wrong. You'll be able to spend more time, but you want to say to yourself, you know what, even though we have more time now, we have a similar energy to when we didn't have that much time because the little bit of time, that 4% or that 10% I gave him, I gave it my all. Now, there's a lot of little things you can do in that time frame, and he has a responsibility, too, to kind of think of things or or, or, or push to, to make that 4 or 10% efficient and, 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 and filled with everything fun, loving, you know, sexual, whatever it is. But, you know, because you're asking the question, you just have to take responsibility. You, you can't right. control what he does, but I just want you to think for now, again, that this, this, kind of, this question is a great question. My wife will probably have really good insight on it as well, but three hours is less than 2% of your week. So when you think about it that way, if you can't give 3% of your time to somebody you love, would you be surprised if it didn't work out 10 years from now, five years no, from now? No, I wouldn't. You couldn't be. I wouldn't. Nope. You couldn't be. And, and one last thing I'll say on, on that, and this is not towards your question, but this is this question has come up a few times. You know, when you talk about a relationship or a romantic relationship, there's like a small list of things that you and your husband can do that you don't expect him to do with anyone else. Right. right? Kissing, hugging, you know, certain text messages, sex in general. I, one thing I say to myself, and I remember, uh, I think my one of the marriage counselors I saw, sought help from years ago said this. If if you if you only want this person to do this list of things with you, but you can't give them three percent of your week, where do you expect them to get it from? Right, mm. exactly. I completely Miles Moreau agree. said. Miles Moreau said it's like a gas station. If you go to the gas station, it's a, if it's closed, what do you do? I'm just going to give up. I'm not going to drive anymore. No, I'm just going to stay right here. Another gas station. We'll find yeah. another gas station. Now I'm not. I'm not encouraging that with your husband or, or even with me or anyone else. But right. it, and you as the, the leader of your life, you have to kind of think to yourself, I don't want I want I want to make sure this gas station stays open. Now it's gonna be times when it's closed and you're gonna have to understand that. But for the most part, there's usually an open sign on here, whether it's be all that attention at four percent, whatever it is, you want to make sure your spouse knows that that sign is usually open. If it's closed, you're not even gonna trip because you know I keep it open when I can. Right. And I'm saying open as far as your time and your energy, not oh, absolutely. This, I not just sex. <laughs> I, <you know. laughs> I understand. I understand. I was about to say, Trev, do we get X rated here? What are we doing on, right. on the show? <laughs> I gotta talk to the men. Okay. I, I know I know they, they tell me like oh, Trev, like come on, talk, talk about it. So I gotta represent for them. <laughs> right. All well, right. I completely appreciate that answer because I always say the same thing like my kids are going to be gone, and then what will we have? Mm -hmm. So, and, you know, he always pushing, uh, we need to spend time, we need to spend time. But I'm like, you know, the kids are here, the kids are here, but you're right. Like, if What's I don't your do youngest? it now, What's your youngest? youngest is six. Yeah, it's tough. It's yes, tough. yes, because he, he is very needy. He, he want to sit in between us everywhere we go. Everywhere we go, everything we do, my six-year-old is right in the middle. And, you know, my 14, my um, my 13-year-old, my 15-year-old, they be like, all right, whatever. But you know, I still gotta spend time with them because they're they're yeah. teenagers. So you want to get ages. in there and you know find out what they did with their day and let them know that you're still interested. And mm -hmm. yeah, I have a 21 year old too. She about to be 22, but she still need she she, needs, she still no. calls me too, mom this, mom that. So mm -hmm. it's like I'm trying to give it to everybody without anybody feeling left out. But I see that sometimes my husband is left out, so I'm like, I gotta get a way to fit everybody in, you know, so that everybody knows that they have a piece of me. I just, you know, I don't want anybody to feel left out. And this lately is him. And I yeah. don't want that. I need you to figure out specifically what are the things 
the thing, the multiple things that make him feel loved. And for you, with that 4% or 10%, whatever it is, you're going to focus your energy on that. So if he's like every other guy and it's that, you know, special time, right. you make sure that, you know what, he ain't going to complain about that. You know, right. we, we may not get dinner to the, every night together. We may not watch a movie every night, but a certain amount of time per month, per week or whatever, you know, I'm going to anticipate his need. I'm going to think about his need before he thinks about it. And I'm going to meet it, whether it's his favorite meal, whether it's his favorite show or if, if there's, a, there's a basketball game on tonight. He's a basketball person. You could be on your phone, but you could sit right next to him if he if he wants that. Because if he wants right. a long time, then you that, that's part of your fault. You know what? You can have that. But you got to figure <laughs> out. You know your husband by now, I'm sure. Right. But We've you been can together even for ask him. Like, you can ask him. That's Congratulations on that. Thank you. Oh, you can God. ask him. Like, hey, you know, I know I know you, but, you know, I'm, I've been really thinking and, you know, I don't want to limit just our time together. So what are some things that you really like? And tell them to be honest and say, listen, I already know this and I know this one and I know this one. But tell me some other things. And then he'll watch you systematically attempt to make that work. Like, I don't get all of the energy I want all the time because of my kids. But, again, I already understand, like, one last thing. I'm sorry. I was saying this historically, like, a 100 years from now. You're going to have great, great grandkids that are going to look at you and your relationship and how you maneuvered, how you got happy you guys were. And and they're going to draw inspiration from that. And so, in essence, you're writing history right now. So make right. it a really good one. Like, you guys obviously are doing well together. Just take it up another notch because when you're gone, you know, we can learn about Bob Marley. And my kids know who Bob Marley is. My kids know who Michael Jackson is. But, right. you know, that, that you know they're popular and, you know, they've left a legacy so yeah. to speak. Yeah. You're going to be the Bob Marley of your family. You want your great grandkids and your grandkids and your kids that you'll never meet to start looking you up a hundred years from now. And like, yo, she was killing it. Like, I really want to be like, <laughs> you, know yes. you want your husband to right. be like too, because you guys are making history in your family. You're right. You're right. So, especially, so it, especially for us as, as African Americans. Especially right. with so much lost history. Lost history. Exactly. And, yeah, exactly. So that's, it's important. It's important. Yes. All right. Well, thank you so much. Here we go. Let me clap that up because that was amazing. So thank you. <laughs> yes. So thank you so much. That was very. Uh, I loved it. That was very good. All yes. right. Thank you, Latricia. You're welcome, Toya. I'll talk to Hello, you Tisha. later. Okay. Have, Have a great day. Bye bye. Bye bye. All right. I don't know her, and I'm proud of her. <laughs> you said you you proud. I don't know her, but I'm proud of her. Like oh, I, I like I like her energy toward her husband, like trying to figure it out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, all right. So let me see. Uh, ta -ta -ta -ta. All right, here we go. So you're back. All right. So we are going to move on to our next question right now. Where are we? There's something. You ready? Hold on. Wait a minute. Where's Trev? Hold on. Wait, remove him. You, um, speaker. Jeff, can you help me for a second? Um, hold on. Uh, I think I, I'm not sure if I did or I didn't. Okay, all right, we're still here, everybody. Hold on, I'm 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 still getting used to all of this again, y'all. Y'all know I just came back in studio like a month or so ago. All right, so moving on, questions, questions, questions. Our next question. So I'm going. There's another question that was along the lines of that one, but I'm going to come back to it because I want to get to some that are going to be a bit controversial right now. And, um, and, and then we'll come back. So you ready? So we'll do this one kind of like a lightning round. Are you ready? I got you. Okay. How long should you date a man that's in jail? Yeah, I saw that question. <laughs> I mean, it really depends on the person. It really does. I, I, I've known several people that were locked up and, you know, and currently in dating, you know, it, it, that's that's a very tricky question. I mean, again, it goes back to purpose. Mm -hmm. What is the purpose for this relationship? Are we mm -hmm. are you serving as um, a source of, you know, release uh, or or peace for this person who's going through 
trouble in prison? Mm -hmm. um, are you aiming to be with this person long term? So when they get out, you have a plan. See, once you focus on what you want, a lot of things line up. So um, you kind of have to decide what your purpose is for that relationship before you can answer that question. Because if mm -hmm. your purpose is, if this is the person you love, especially if you love them before they went in, but if this is the person you love, then your answers are already decided. You know, if this is the person you love, this person you want to spend the rest of your life with, I guess the answer is already in the question. You're not going to, you know, there's no timeline. You're going to be with them until. You, you're going to be a ride or die. If that's your purpose. If, if, that's if, your you're, purpose. if, if that's your purpose. You know, because some people, that may not be their purpose. Maybe they, they're, they're lonely and they need someone to talk to. And then maybe they find someone who's not in prison and then now they're, they don't need that person in prison anymore. Right. So it depends on your purpose. Okay. Uh, can you be with a man and not like his kids? You can be, but I would tell that man that it doesn't logically make sense to be with you. <laughs> Listen, I, 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 I do believe you can be with somebody and not like their kids. However, I, it depends on the age of the child. Yeah. Number one. Yeah. Because yeah. if that child is 30 years old, yeah, you know, whatever. Right, you know, right, and, right. And, and especially if he feels it's whatever. But here's the other part of that. You know, being with someone is meeting their needs uh, or, or loving someone is anticipating their needs. Immediately. Now, if he is a person that is really in love with his child, like this is the, you know, the no matter what he's always been for there for that child. He loves spending time with them. Uh, he calls them all. If you see the energy toward his child is one of a loving father and not one of a distant father. Mm -hmm. Um, you have some trouble ahead of you. Yeah. Because if if you don't like my child, you don't like me. Relationship it, is probably not going to work. Right. Yeah. Okay. I'll tell him, keep it moving. Yeah. What about his mother? Can you not like someone's mother and be happy with them? Yes. Because it again, these are very general questions. But it's you what? know, my wife does not love my mother because she's never met my mother. My mother has been out of my life. She's still alive. She's been out of my life since I was a kid. Mm. So it's possible. But now let's go back to let's say the mother is actually in their lives. Mm -hmm. uh, it goes back to the same thing. It depends on their relationship with his mother. If he really loves his mother, mm -hmm. I think for him it should be a red flag that you don't, because it's it's kind of hard. To be was to have someone have such an impact on your life and you have such a positive relationship with them. Yeah. But in turn, you're going to turn this love to this person who you now have to curtail and, you know, step, you know, tiptoe and holidays and all the other stuff. Like, you know, so I, I would say for for the man, it's a not a red flag. It's an orange flag if she doesn't like your mother. But for the for the woman as well. Think about that. Do I want to be with this man who loves his mother, but I can't stand her? Mm -hmm. It might not make logical sense for you to be with that man. Yeah. yeah. So you got to think about that. You, you really got to think about it. But it depends on their relationship with that person, that child or that mother. Yeah. That yeah. will determine whether you should even continue with that person. Because it, it's not a package deal. Yeah. But it's like the free thing that comes along with the package. Okay. All right. And what is the difference between gaslighting and a narcissist? I'm not sure if this is really a, a coach question, but uh, I think. Yeah, we're, we're going to have to skip that one. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So, <laughs> Only for a couple of reasons. I'll skip right. that one. Okay. So we'll skip that one. Okay. So next. He's a dictionary for that. Next question. Mm -hmm. What are some boundaries for co-parenting when you have an established relationship with someone else other than the biological parent? So if you're already in another relationship, what are boundaries with as far as co-parenting with your ex? Now, let me just say this, right? <laughs> because when I read <laughs> this question, because this is... Yeah. A problem in the African American community. <laughs> I, I know why. I mean, right. This is a huge, 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 huge problem in the African American community. We have this sense of, because nine times out of ten, none of these people were married. 
So we have this baby daddy, baby mama. Oh, that's baby mama. So she could always get it. Or that's baby daddy. And he can yeah. always get it. Philosophy in the yeah. African-American community. <laughs> and it's like, I honestly, I feel like this stems from the fact that as a people, we really want connection. Right. This is this is this is my philosophy on this. Right. And then you can come mm -hmm. in with yours. But my philosophy is we really want connection. We are really longing for connection and some sort of belonging to something. So when we have children with people, that's family. That's connection. Mm -hmm. Even if mm -hmm. you were never married to them, even if you literally never had a a family in the sense of living in the same household, family relationships, traditions mm -hmm. or any of those things you literally had sex one night y'all had a baby you barely talked on the phone it was this that or that. you know what i mean like and unfortunately that's a lot of people's story so uh, and and i'm not knocking anything but what i'm saying is it becomes a problem i mean problem so much so that you see it on reality shows where this one's baby mama showed up and did whatever this one's baby daddy showed up and did whatever and and it ruins future relationships because of who you had children with so as right. far as my opinion on this as far as what boundaries you should have you should have extremely strict boundaries i feel like when and this is just this is just me but i feel like you need to really have extremely strict boundaries with whomever the the other parent to these children are because at the end of the day if you're already in another established relationship this person is still your ex mm -hmm. so no matter if you had a relationship no matter if you had children with this person or not the dynamic between you and this person should have boundaries now whatever happens with your children is what happened with your children if your dad wants to take them as the mom wants to take them that's just that just is what it is but the personal relationship between your ex and you're now in another relationship your ex and you there has to be strict boundaries in that be because what is the difference between that and any other ex if you're in a new relationship you bring mm -hmm. on this insecurity in your relationship and and oh, i could talk about this for days but my point is and i'm not the coach here but my point is is that there has to be strict boundaries because this person is still an ex and you were still in a new relationship. But what do you mm -hmm. think about it, Trev? I'm going to stop talking. Go ahead. What do you think about no, I, this? Again, I, I'm glad you shared what you had to share. Because <laughs> I don't have quite this experience. Um, right. But right. I understand right. it. And I've, I've right. talked to many people in this position. And as far as what boundaries specifically, mm -hmm. I don't have a list of that. Because, again, it depends on the person. But I'll yeah. say this philosophy-wise. You know, this, I'm big on philosophy. Because if you have a certain way of thinking, a lot of things that you want line up because you're focused on a certain thing. And I know how the mind works. It really does um, bring you what you focus on. But I do not have a dog. But if I did have a dog and I, I would put a big fence around my property and close it off, not because I'm insecure about the dog. I, I put the, the fence around my property so that I feel comfortable allowing the dog to do what it wants to do mm. and i don't have to worry about it running in the street or mm. somebody you know just grabbing it or anything like that if i want to let my dog outside and go i feel comfortable because i've set these boundaries yeah. so when you're in a relationship it's not about demands it's about letting the person know what you need mm. to feel comfortable because if you set those boundaries Mm -hmm. Like you put that fence around your property, you're not worried about your dog when you open the door. Go ahead, go outside and pee if you have to. You're not even like, oh my god, did somebody take him? Did, did a car hit him? No, you have the fence, so you're actually carefree, and you don't have to put your attention toward. It. Yeah. So if you if you create the boundary in your relationship and you let it be known, not again, it's not about demands. That's the right. wrong way to go. 
But if you let it be known what you need to feel comfortable, guess what? When he or she goes to see baby daddy or baby mama, you're not even thinking about it because you put the fence around you. That's the reason you put the fence around your, your yeah. property is so that you don't have to be insecure and yeah. you can allow that to be what it is. Because focusing on the negative on that situation is only going to hurt your relationship, not help. So, again, there's nothing wrong with boundaries for those people in those situations. You put that boundary around you so that you don't have to be insecure and you can allow that person to be themselves. Now, obviously, if that boundary is broken, then that you have a whole other conversation. Yeah, because now you're creating a trust issue. And then and then that leads, you know, there's, there's a whole slew of things that go that direction. But again, it's not about keeping tabs or monitoring this person because nobody needs a parent over them, especially if they're in a relationship. Mm -hmm. But if you trust this person, mm -hmm. you set that 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 fence around your property, and not to uh, relate a guy right. to a dog or anything like that, but you can you can be free knowing that listen, they're not gonna get by a car, they're not gonna sleep with each other. Not, you know, all that stuff is out your mind and you yeah. can be who you want to be and not have to focus on the negative. I had a, I had a situation in a relationship where um, <laughs> I had uh, I was I was dating a guy who would go and uh, drop their child off at home after the child would either spend time with us or the child would spend time with just him or whatever the case was. And for some reason whenever he would drop the child off at home, you always needed to go in the house. Why? Now, we're not talking about small child. We're not talking about five, six, you know, you're still just mommy, daddy. We're talking about teenage child. And so the conversation would be, well, you know, it is still important that I see how my child is living or what's going on, or it makes mm -hmm. my child... Um, feel good to to know that I'm a part of their space or a part of their day or whatever, you know, okay, all right, yeah, but um, <clears throat> in this particular relationship, <laughs> part of my boundaries are not, don't have anything to do with you and your child. However, when it comes to you and your ex, whose house you are now frolicking around, um, now I have a, a problem with that. And that has nothing to do with insecurity uh, for me, but it has everything to do with boundaries for this particular relationship. Because in, in, in the same sense, I'm not going to be at my ex-husband's house just randomly walking around because my children are there. That's, that's something that I feel like people really need. A boundary with that's one of those boundaries now again if it's the child if it's it's the child and the child needs something or the child is sick or going to a hospital and you just need to be in the house fine but every drop off now you got to be inside and then we had a big blow up because at one of those inside drop offs y'all decide to sit down and have a family dinner and i was like ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh, okay. So, <laughs> so you, you over having dinner, sitting down at the table, pass me the bread. Is that my fork with your ex and y'all child together? I'm sitting over here at home, and you over there. Ooh, hmm. That crossed the boundary for me. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not. I'm. Okay, I'm gonna say something. <laughs> I am. I'm not mad at that boundary because. It almost feels like if you and someone, especially had a baby together, yeah, that's not really just your ex. It's not really like your ex. That's somebody you used to have sex with. Right. And, right. And I, for me, it's a little bit of an insecurity. I'm not going to lie. It would, be, it would be a little bit of an insecurity for me to think, because, you know, most of the time when people are together and they divorce or split up, it's not that they stop loving each other. They just never learned how to live with each other. Hmm, so possibly. the love is usually still there in most, in many cases. Or, or sometimes the marriage wasn't right to begin with. That's possible as well. In that case, you may not even have to set the boundary because you know that they don't want that ex. Yeah, I had, I did not have that. But think about that: the guy dating you, if he had this conversation with you and your ex, like, and, and you're completely over it. He literally has nothing to worry about. Uh, nothing now, at he all. He may not. He may not know that. He yes. may still think in his head, 
Mm, she might want to give it to him when she sees him. But that's why I would never put in, even though anybody that knows me knows that there would never be another chance in hell. But, and we know that between each other, that there would never be another chance in hell. But whomever I'm dating or whoever I end up married to or with, I still need to make sure that I'm creating some sort of comfort level and security within them. So that's right. just something I would never I would never do. I would never put myself in a situation where someone can question my motives or even question my behavior, you know, because I wouldn't want to put my partner through that. So here's another thing. Um, And and again, I I tend to agree with what you're saying. But on the flip side of that. This person created life with this other person. Right. Mm -hmm. So regardless of they're together or not. They're still contributing to this history, this 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 family legacy, even though you guys are not technically a family. Mm-hmm. So I'm not saying this personally, but I'm saying if I wanted to go into the house, these are still family to me. Now there really has to be no more romantic connection, but again, that's that's very weird because there's like a it may be like one percent there, but you just confirmed that sometimes there's no more connection. Mm-hmm. So I don't want to I don't want to tell somebody that they can't go in the house and they can't interact with their family. Mm-hmm. I just want to make sure that they know what's right. Or, you know, but again, there's nothing wrong with having, I would, for me. I would probably be in your position. I would probably right. say I'd rather you not go in the house at all. That way, I don't, my imagination doesn't have to fill in the gaps. Right. However, this is still family. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. if they went in the house, they broke bread together. It's like, all right. You're not like going in the bedroom or anything, right? You're not like. I mean, I would, I would never know. Around. Yeah, I would never but, know. But, but again, this is trust. So you you set that boundary, and right. you're like, listen, I'm gonna leave you alone. I know that's your child. I know you interact with the mother. Y'all are pretty cool. Y'all ain't hang. Y'all not like meet me at the movie theater or something like that. But you know, like this is my boundary. The minute you break it, you can go back to her. <laughs> but 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 again i honestly would be more in your position maybe i need to grow a little bit more but i would be a little insecure like you know y'all were sleeping together 10 years ago not even and listen a lot of guys a lot of guys will say this if i had a baby with her i could probably still have that when i and, want and that's a lot thing. of guys will say that and, and unfortunately that's a part of our culture people yeah people stick with this oh that's baby mama or that's baby daddy so there's still some level of ownership that's always mine that goes on with us as a people i Mm -hmm. am not one of those people that do that Mm -hmm. because i'm like ooh, go but i i do know that (laughs) yeah literally (laughs) but i do know i've been accused of that trev we'll talk about that behind the scenes but my (laughs) point is is that i do know that us as a people as a culture this gets us in a lot of trouble. And I just really feel like it's a part of belonging and it's a part of, of wanting to wanting to belong to something or wanting to have this family. And we do it, unfortunately, even if it's just in the throes of passion and we end up having a child, all of a sudden we feel like um, we've created this quote unquote family when it's like, eh, that's DNA, not necessarily <laughs> not necessarily family like you know my ex-husband is like a cousin now you know what i mean it's like we're not related we just got the same kids you know yeah. but and but there's lot, no hate lot, at all a lot of times again i think a lot of people still love each other even through the divorce and they just never learn to live with each other never learn how to share yeah. that space but yeah. the love is still there so that's where i think the trouble comes it's like for some no. people that 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 is definitely the case and yeah. and especially for a lot of women i feel like if they're used to women are territorial anyway so if you can still have a man that will still do things for you no matter if you're in a relationship yeah. with him or not that becomes a very tricky area you know yeah. for a lot of women but, especially if she doesn't respect the 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 the, the woman who's in a relationship and i right. think Right. A, a mature woman. So I'll say last thing, you know, that guy, he goes into the house of his baby mother. That's a little off to you. But if the woman is mature enough, she'll 
act a certain way or or set her own boundaries because she respects your right. your relationship. Not necessarily him. Right. But she like, oh, I know him. He gonna he gonna try to hit him. But I'm gonna I'm gonna put these things in place so that your current girlfriend doesn't look at me wrong. I don't right. I don't care about her, but I don't want her. I understand where she's coming from, and I don't want her to think anything, right. especially when nothing is happening. Right. So maybe she says. How about you and your girl come over for dinner? And, that, see, that, and, that, 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 and that's, that's the that's thing. The, that's the thing. Because whatever relationship she might be in, if if she was in a relationship, would he be coming over if you were in a relationship? Right. 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 Or is right. your man going to his baby mom's house? Or right. or is it just okay because it's you and it's this situation? You know what I mean? Right. So. Right. Because you know, there's plenty of people that are in those positions, oh, and the, the new relationship with the mother and the new relationship with the father, they'll have, end up having dinner together. They all cool. Yeah, they may not if, hang if, out in all the time, but yeah, why don't you bring your wife over or your your girlfriend over? Right. Like it's it's because we we are definitely not getting back together. Yeah, we understand the relationship we have with this child, and this now your your you and your current girlfriend or husband are an extension of that. So yeah. let's not be weird about it. Yeah. But yes, it is weird though if she's single and he's in and he's not, he's with you and he's going over there. It's like, yeah. well girl, you know, you know, you know, girl, you know what that looks like. Like why don't you, you know, you she could have put that boundary. Well he should be the one to do it, but she could have done that, it as well. That's not strange to everybody, but you know, again, like you said, there's there's gotta be a lot there's it has to be maturity there. I mean I personally I have a bonus daughter who is 24 now and I've been in her life since she was seven and I'm no longer with, I'm no longer with her father, but I was with her father mm-hmm. for a number of years and me and her mother are like this. Yeah. And we've been like this for years now. And, and you know, people don't necessarily understand that relationship, uh, yeah. especially since we call each other baby mama at this point, but um, we're, we're like this and, and that's completely in the absence of him. And right. even when he was around, we all went to dinner a couple of months ago. I mean, it's nothing. I think when you know the purpose, when you don't know the purpose of a relationship, you're bound okay. to abuse it. Yeah, absolutely. So listen, on that note, there were so many additional questions that we didn't get a chance to get to because uh, we're at the end of the hour. We have another show that's coming up on this station. So I got to get out of here anyway. But I definitely want to make sure that we get a chance to address them. Maybe I'll put it in our group um, on Facebook and then we can go from there. Or maybe we'll just have you back, Trev. And then maybe we can get you in studio and then... You know, and we can definitely talk some more. So hopefully we can do that sometime soon. And I think that mm-hmm. would be great. But again, your your input, your tips, your tools, your gems, your jewels, just getting us all to see a different way and think a different way is extremely valuable. And we need more of this. So thank you so very much for coming on the show. And I hope to see you soon. Absolutely. I look forward to seeing you as well. Thank you for having me. How can people find you really quickly for those who, who want some relationship coaching? Um, contact you. Um, <laughs> no, um, I'm more than likely going to be on this show several times. Yep. That's one thing. Um, just social media, Trevor Trio Scott, T-R-E-O, Trevor Trio Scott, Facebook, Instagram. And again, you know, to you. All right. <laughs> So, all right. Thank you so much, Trev. This was great. Thank you. I'll be talking to you behind the scenes. Yes, ma'am. All right. And thank you, everybody that tuned in tonight. Thank you so much to Latricia that came on and was able to ask her question live and to everybody that put your questions in the DM and the stories and text them to me. Thank you so much. If we didn't get a chance to address it, we are definitely going to make sure we do so. I love you all for watching. I love you all for listening. God willing, I will be here next week. Same time, same place, different show. And I will see you all soon. Bye-bye, everybody. Mm